Okay, so we're going to talk now about the endocrine pancreas. Now, if you um, recall, the pancreas is this little sliver of uh, this little tissue that's sort of tucked in the bend of the duodenum as it sweeps down from the stomach. And it's right across from the, the liver, you know, which is is this sort of part of the liver and it um, drains with the bile with via the common bile duct actually through the pancreatic duct into the small intestines. Now so one of the functions of the, of the pancreas that we're going to talk about more when we get to the GI section is this exocrine function where the GI tract where the pancreas is dumping large amounts of um, bicarbonate and um, enzymes to aid digestion into the small bowel via this pancreatic duct. Okay, so that's one of the major functions of the pancreas and most of the cells in the pancreas are arranged in, in what are called pancreatic alveoli which is a group of cells around the central area that drains into the pancreatic duct and again it's it's producing you know amylase and lipase and other pancreatic enzymes that aid in, in, uh, in digestion but interspersed within these pancreatic um, exocrine cells there are these islets of other cells called the islets of Langerhans and I believe that uh, Langerhans was the anatomist who discovered these and here's a picture of an islet of Langerhans with different cells within it lit up in different colors now what we have here are a group of cells we have um, beta cells are the most common cells. They're the ones that are seen in blue here. Actually, I should draw them in blue. Beta cells and beta cells produce insulin. The orange cells here are called alpha cells and alpha cells produce glucagon. Now there's a few um, green cells here um, and they are actually called PP cells or pancreatic peptide cells. They produce, of course, pancreatic peptide. And then there are some other cells. I believe um, delta cells produce somatostatin and um, epsilon cells produce ghrelin. And we're not really, somatostatin, ghrelin, and pancreatic peptide are and are hormones that are involved directly with digestion and the management of nutrients and appetite. Um, we're not going to talk about them a lot. Um, and actually, you know, until relatively recently, not much was known about their um, endocrine role. Actually, somatostatin is is a chemical that has a dual role um, because it also functions as a growth hormone. Um, but Suffice it to say, we are not going to spend time learning about somatostatin and ghrelin in this lesson or in this class. Um, so our major focus over the next half hour or so will be a discussion of the pancreatic um, function of producing and secreting insulin and glucagol and their role in the management of glucose levels in the body. Okay, so what does insulin do? Insulin has significant effects actually throughout the body, but um, it has very important effects in the liver um, and muscle cells. These are muscles and fat cells. And now insulin, so insulin um, increases glucose uptake um, in, in all three of these organs, or groups of organs, um, increases glucose usage, increases glycogenesis, which is the cre creation of glycogen molecules in, in the liver, 
um, decreases glycogenolysis, which is the breakdown of glycogen to create glucose. And it also increases amino acid uptake and fatty acid synthesis and storage. So because of this, insulin is actually considered an anabolic steroid because it actually encourages the body to create new things like new fat, new muscle, etc. Now, so we know that throughout the body, um, glucose has a um, has an important role in allowing um, glucose to be transported into the cell. And you know, this is a um, insulin receptor here. So when insulin um, is released into the bloodstream by the pancreas, it binds with this insulin receptor on cells throughout the body. And really, it, there's insulin receptors on almost every cell of the body except within the central nervous system. Um, so when insulin um, is received by this receptor, it um, sends out a second messenger to various places of the cell. One place that it goes is to the glucose transporter. And this image doesn't show this, but another place that it goes is to the sodium the sodium potassium ATPase pump. And this is critical because it requires this high concentration of sodium outside of the cell in order for the glucose transporter to work because glucose is, is transported by facilitated diffusion um, by a mechanism called um, secondary active transport where it sort of rides we get one sodium um, molecule and one glucose molecule um, connecting on here together and um, the sodium rides down its concentration gradient and into the cell back into the cell and the glucose takes a ride along with it into the cell so in order for this glucose transporter to effectively transport glucose, we need to have a good concentration, a normal concentration of sodium and a high concentration gradient between sodium outside the cell and sodium inside the cell. And this is maintained by the sodium potassium pump. So that's why it's important for insulin to both activate the sodium potassium pump as well as the glucose transporter. Okay, now it has a number of other effects in inside cells too, and we just talked about that, the um, glycogenolysis, um, making glucose in, into glycogen, um, fat lipid, per, you know, so we have glycogenolysis here. Lipid synthesis and protein synthesis. Okay, so interestingly enough, you know, we, what is it that stimulates insulin to be produced? So insulin, um, the pancreatic hormones are not controlled centrally by the hypothalamus or the pituitary gland. They respond um, directly to blood levels. Um, insulin in particular responds only to blood levels of glucose. Now, interestingly enough, though, um, insulin is a hormone that is important in the uptake of proteins and fats as well. It's just as important for fats and proteins, but without the presence of glucose, insulin is not going to get secreted. So fats and proteins will not be absorbed effectively by cells either. So, you know, it's interesting because I think that um, it one of the reasons that the Atkins diet had some effects, and, you know, it's still controversial, but theoretically, um, by decreasing your carbohydrate load, you, you know, decrease the amount of glucose available in your bloodstream, and you're going to decrease the insulin secreted from your pancreas, and you're not going to effectively absorb fats and proteins into your cells and they may get excreted um, which will decrease the number of um, 
of nutrients available to your cells and that may you know theoretically that's one of the theories behind why the Atkins diet worked. Now glucagon is actually stimulated by exactly the opposite um, of its stim glucagon is stimulated to be released from the alpha cells um, when there are low levels of glucose. And glucagon works primarily in the, in fact, uh, as far as I know, only in the liver. And it kind of only has one, it's not as complex as insulin. It stimulates the liver to release glucose via glyco, um, glycogenolysis. So it's breaking down glycogen into, um, into, glu into glucose and also gluconeogenesis which means the creation of new glucose from other substrates, protein or, um, or fats, lipids.